Star Wars 7x7 episode 2248 today, the first part of my interview with Alex Segura, the author of Poe Dameron, Free Fall. Punch it. Hey Rebel Riser, I'm Alan Voivod and this is Star Wars 7x7, your daily dose of Star Wars joy. And thank you so much for joining me for it. So we've talked about Poe Dameron Free Fall in the past here on the podcast. It's the novel that talks about the time that Poe Dameron spent with the Spice Runners of Kajimi, as revealed initially by The Rise of Skywalker. Alex Segura is the author of that novel. Here is his full deal. He is an acclaimed writer of novels, comic books, and podcasts. He's the author of Free Fall, the Pete Fernandez mystery series, including the Anthony Award-nominated crime novels Dangerous Ends, Blackout, and Miami Midnight. The Anthony Award is a prestigious mystery novel award. The upcoming Secret Identity by Flatiron Books. He has also written a number of comic books, most notably the superhero noir, The Black Ghost, the YA music series, The Archies and the Archie Meets collection of crossovers featuring real-life cameos from the Ramones, the B-52s, and more. He's also the creator and co-writer of the Lethal Lit Crime slash YA podcast from iHeartRadio, which was named one of the best podcasts of 2015 by the New York Times. By day, he is a co-president of Archie Comics. He is a Miami native, but currently lives in New York with his wife and children. And in this interview with Alex, we're going to talk about his background with Star Wars, we're going to talk about how the opportunity to write Poe Dameron Freefall came about. We're going to talk about elements of Poe's personality and a lot more. So without further ado, let's just jump right into the first part of my interview with Alex Segura, the author of Poe Dameron Freefall. Alex Segura, thank you so much for joining me on Star Wars 7x7. How are you today? I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. This is uh, going to be fun. Oh yeah, I certainly hope so. And you've actually written a very fun novel with Poe Dameron Free Fall, and that's what we're here to talk about, which is very cool. So uh, maybe we could start off with a little bit about your own background with and love of Star Wars storytelling. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember a time where there wasn't Star Wars for me. You know, as a kid, as just a young toddler, or uh, you know, I when I was that small, I think it was around the time Empire came out, and uh, I just remember, you know, being terrified of Darth Vader and loving the Ewoks and Return of the Jedi and just being swept up in kind of the mythos pretty early on. I feel like each trilogy uh, connects with a key moment for me. Um, you know, I had the action figures, the toy lightsaber. I was really into it as a kid. And um, as I got older, you know, there was that gap between the original trilogy and the prequel. So it was kind of we had a sense of, you know, is there going to be more? So I think that's when really the expanded universe kind of kicked into high gear and then you got to see the stories that filled in the gaps between um, the film canon. And uh, so I read a lot of the novels and I read, you know, I read the novelizations of the, the movies as well. And uh, the comics, definitely Dark Horse put out a ton of really great comics during that period. Oh, yeah. Um, and, you know, when the prequels came out, it just felt like such a huge cultural event. I remember waiting in line for you know, on uh, the, the day Phantom Menace premiered with some buddies, uh, college friends, and just being so psyched at more Star Wars. And then, um, you know, and now with the the sequel trilogy, it just, um, it's cool to kind of experience it with my son, who's like four and a half and kind of slowly getting into it in his own way. Um, so, you kind of, yeah, it's just been uh, ever present, which is probably a good thing. How are you controlling yourself in terms of sharing with your four and a half year old? I mean, you know, do you have the temptation to do the marathon of all 11 movies or are you managing to uh, you know, exercise some discipline in that regard? Yeah, you know, he, we're pretty kind of uh, disciplined with screen time and stuff like that. So he's not, he hasn't gotten the full immersion, but I think that'll come sooner rather than later. Probably so. Uh, yeah, yeah. So how did the opportunity to write the Poe Dameron novel come about? Uh, well, Mike Siglain, who's the head of Lucasfilm Publishing, uh, reached out to me and, you know, we've known each other a long time. And um, oh. I had just announced I had just announced that my um, private eye series, the Pete Fernandez mysteries were ending uh, with the fifth book, Miami Midnight. And um, he reached out to me and he said, you know, would you ever do some Star Wars? And I, I said, of course, not really knowing what he meant, you know, it was such a general <laughs> question. But of course, I would do anything. Mm -hmm. 
Star Wars, and um, he drilled down a bit and explained it was a Poe Dameron YA novel, and uh, it felt like such a great fit. I mean, Poe is by far my favorite character in the sequel trilogy, and wow. I just felt like there was a lot of a lot of ground to cover, a lot of uh, a lot of stories to tell, and um, especially coming out of of Rise of Skywalker and, and what was going to be revealed in the film. So I knew there was a lot of potential uh, character conflict, a lot of really ripe uh, stories. And uh, yeah, it was a no brainer. I said, I said yes immediately. And, and we were off to the races. That's actually a really good point that you bring up because you probably were writing this novel before the rise of Skywalker was actually released, I would imagine. So mm-hmm. what was yeah. that like? I mean, that had to have been for somebody who has been a lifelong star Wars fan to suddenly be, on the inside and know things that were going to happen in the rise of Skywalker before they came out. I mean, how did you not walk around and just spontaneously explode? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, no, it was cool. It's, I mean, as a fan, you're just like, Oh, I know kind of what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, obviously that's, you know, you, you're a professional too. So I've been in, you know, I work at Archie and I've worked at places like DC and and places where, you know, you kind of know what the big events are going to be and you keep them under your hat. So, so that didn't feel too alien to me, but it was definitely cool to know, like at least some of the beats that were going to happen specific to Poe. Um, and that helped inform the book obviously. And then, uh, a highlight for me was going to see the movie and getting a few hours to myself, you know, I don't know if you're a dad, but you know it's hard to get time away from from the the family, just the day to day responsibilities. And so, getting a couple hours in the theater, watching the movie, and then seeing it, it basically tees you up for a free fall in such a cool way. I mean, the big questions you have coming out of Rise of Skywalker are, well, Poe was a spice runner. What was that like? And who is Zori Bliss? Who is this cool looking character that I just want to know more about? And you just love Babu, so. You know, it's like those three things really propel you into free fall. And I thought that was so awesome. Definitely. I am a dad, too, actually. My kids are 17 and 12. I'm sending my oh, nice. oldest off to college uh, in a couple of days. Congrats. So that's going to be Congrats. crazy. And um, thank you. And we are going to talk about Babu, but uh, I'm going to work my <laughs> way around to him. Okay, yeah. Uh, but you mentioned Poe, who is, of course, the star of free fall naturally, and how the movie tees him up. But he is a very strong character, and I would say there are probably some elements of his character that are already core to his identity by the time we meet him in Free Fall. So what would you say you know, about Poe's personality, about his character, is already central to him when we first meet him at the ripe old age of 16? Yeah, no, one of the cool things and one of the things I really wanted to do was for readers to identify with Poe immediately. Like you read the opening pages of Free Fall and you know, okay, this is Poe Dameron. It's not the Poe Dameron you see in Force Awakens, but it is kind of proto Poe. It's like he's going to go through a few things and become that character that we see in at the beginning of Force Awakens, but it's def- he's definitely a hero. He's definitely stubborn, emotional, impetuous. And I think what this book, this, the journey of this book, um, really tells you how his character is defined and the lessons he's learned to kind of be much more developed by the time we see him. Um, but he's definitely a heroic character. And this is kind of the uh, the fire he walks through that defines that element of the character. He really kind of gets a sense of what his mission is, and what his place is in the galaxy. And, you know, it's, it's also a coming of age story. It's a story of, uh, you know, learning our place in the world, you know, you know, trying to live up to the legacy of our parents and Poe and Kess, you know, Kess and Charabay are these legendary heroes and he's got the weight of that on him. And so he has to choose, you know, do I, do I embrace that and kind of follow in their footsteps or do I try and carve my own path? And how does that fit in with my desire to get off Yavin 4? And so, you know, he does some, for lack of a better word, kind of silly things. And, you know, <laughs> he doesn't put a lot of thought into some stuff. And that's really part of Poe's character, you know, being, instinctual and taking opportunities as they arise but um he's also very strategic and an amazing pilot and so we see all of those things in different forms and by the end of the book you kind of without spoiling anything you have a a clear path to what he's going to become much later yeah and that epilogue which yeah again i i won't spoil either but is really well done and very well placed so kudos to that for sure yeah great so, oh yeah. So what would you say that Poe really learns about himself? And you've talked a bit, a little bit about it already, but what does he really learn about himself and about the you know, wider galaxy around him 
as a result of the events of the novel. I mean, obviously he knows a little bit because he's heard from you know his dad and his mom to some degree and from Lulo as well, but what does he really learn and come out of the novel's events with? Yeah, I think the big, uh, the big lesson coming out of the book for him is that, you know, just because you choose a certain path and it happens to mirror the path of your parents, it doesn't mean it's wrong. You know, it's, I think he really learns what the definition of a hero is and what the meaning of sacrifice is. And uh, by the end of the book, he, he gets a clear message of what his, his goal should be and what his path should be. So it's, it's a lot about legacy and, you know, standing up for what you believe in. Um, Cause he's really put to the test. He's given a, there's a fork in the road at the end and he can choose to kind of do this easy adventurous life, or he can choose a harder path that's much more heroic and much more based on sacrifice and doing the right thing. And, and obviously we know what that choice is going to be, but it's the journey. That's the interesting part. You know, what, what really defines this character? Yeah. And the novel takes him through, you know, a series of challenges and it seems like, you know, the challenges all end up being very uniquely specific tests of the boundaries of his morality, you know, like how he's right. going to decide, OK, I can justify this. I can justify that. There are things about these circumstances that I can work with. But where is he really going to draw the line and how is it going to define his character as he decides to move away from the Spice Runners? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's really, you know, Poe is very heroic, he's very driven, he knows the difference between right and wrong, but he's also to his benefit and detriment can be really loyal and he builds a family around himself. We see that in the sequel trilogy, he builds this, this team of people he is so loyal to. And we see that also in this book. And the problem is that in this book, he surrounds himself with criminals. You know, the Spice Runners are criminals. And to a certain degree, he, he threads the needle and kind of rationalizes it for himself. But at a certain point, he has to decide, well, I'm just not cool with this. This has gone too far. You know, it's just not my plan. I wanted to get off Yavin 4. I didn't want to get this deep into, you know, the underworld. And then that's, that's a hard choice because we've all had friends who are problematic or friends that maybe don't do the right thing as we would. And um, it's tough. And obviously the Poe and Zori dynamic is really integral to the book. And he feels a great connection to her and she's a spice runner through and through. So that's the big conflict between them that we see kind of bloom, I guess, for the lack of a better term as the book progresses. And that's kind of where they diverge. You know, Poe isn't as enamored with being a spice runner. He's kind of enamored with the adventure and he's excited about his dynamic with Zori, who is his friend. And then, she, but she's a hard, fast spice runner. That's her life. That's what she's going to do. And that's what her legacy as well. So that's, that's the big conflict between them. Yeah. And so with Zori, obviously, you know, we know a lot more about Poe than we do about Zori as we go into this. And we learned a little bit about her with the Rise of Skywalker. But for the most part, her backstory was relatively unknown. So what was that like for you having the opportunity to be able to really flesh out that backstory for her? I mean, it was cool. It was great. It was amazing and a huge honor just, you know, to have such a great say in Poe's origin story was, was a lot of fun and also obviously took some research just knowing what had happened. But with Zori, it was, like you said, a much blanker slate. You know, we see her for 10, 12 minutes on screen and you're, it's very similar to Boba Fett. You're like, who is that? We're just like <laughs> hypnotized by the, the visual of this character and, and Carrie Russell just plays it so well, so cool and so defiant. Um, so we took those broad strokes and obviously in conjunction with, with Lucasfilm and the story group, just kind of came up with the big beats and how it tied in with Poe's origin. But I wanted her to have a similar arc. I wanted her to kind of start as this kid trying to push back against her legacy and then realizing what it was and how to embrace it and how, how that played with Poe. And um, so their arcs are parallel until the very end and they kind of crash together and fall apart <laughs> as most teen, teen, uh, teen dynamics do. Oh, yeah. All right, we're going to pause right there and we will pick up the back half of the interview on tomorrow's episode of the show. Before we go, I do just want to give a quick shout out to our friends at Audible and say once again that you can get a free audiobook download and a free 30-day trial by going to sw7x7.com slash audible. Again, that's sw7x7.com slash audible for your free audiobook download and free 30-day trial. And thank you very much for supporting Star Wars 7x7 by checking that out. And that is going to do it for today's episode of the show. Thank you so much for joining me for it, as always. And may the Force be with you wherever in the world you may be. 
Star Wars 7x7 is not endorsed or sponsored yet by Lucasfilm Limited, Disney, or 20th Century Fox and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Star Wars, the Star Wars logo, all names and pictures of Star Wars characters, vehicles, and any other Star Wars related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Lucasfilm Limited or their respective trademark and copyright holders. May the force be with them. All original content is copyright 2020 by Star Wars 7x7. We hope you love it.